Brandon, what do you think of what Emmanuel Sanders had to say? Well, well, well. Here, here's the deal. Well, first, where is Nick Wright at the, when, when we're having this discussion about Josh Allen? He, he, he doesn't want to be around when we're talking about Josh Allen. But anytime we talk about Baker Mayfield, oh, Nick Wright wants to lead the conversation. He wants to be the guy. So Nick Wright, hurry up and get back so we can talk about Josh Allen. I absolutely love this. Josh Allen has one of the most talented arms that that in the NFL today. Okay, Josh Allen can make all the throws on the field. Up there with Mahomes, up there with Aaron Rodgers, and especially when you're talking about the deep ball and efficiency with Emmanuel Sanders was talking about, he said a post to, to Beasley. When you talk about deep ball, you got to throw Russell Wilson in there as well, okay? But here's the, here's the challenge with this is consistency, <laughs> right? Aaron Rodgers consistently make those throw, throws and put it on a dime. You got Patrick Mahomes that consistently do that. Now, we saw the jump from year one to year three from a completion percentage with Josh Allen. The dude has it all. The dude is lights out. So I understand what Emmanuel Sanders is talking about, but you just don't want a guy to flash here and there. You want a guy to be able to do that week after week after week. And Patrick Mahomes, he, that, that is the case study. Uh, 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 Aaron Rodgers, that is the case study. Uh, uh, um, Russell Wilson, that is the case study, coach. So when you talk about his ceiling, the ceiling to me, coach, is, is up there with the greats. Like, I, I got this stat from our guys, Dusty, right? Our soup, one of our super producers. Dusty sent me this. 4,500 yards producers. through the air, 45 touchdowns, and less than 10, 10 interceptions. There's only four guys that in the history of the league that was ever able to do this. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning twice, and, oh, your boy Josh Allen. Nick Wright? Baker Mayfield ain't up there. Baker, I, I love you, Baker. I know you're going to have a beast of a year. But but look, this dude, this is the ceiling. This is what it is. Now, the challenge with him, coach, is he has to go through KC. Patrick Mahomes, he's not playing with the AFC. And that offense, that team, and that coaching staff, they're legit. So that's going to be the challenge over the next couple years is, is can they get over the hump, and that hump being Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, the first thing I, I want to say is that I love the range of, uh, of this show and the fact that Jenna can somehow bring in Neil Diamond and Barbara Streisand after we're talking about two <laughs> rap greats. Coach, you're I mean, the that, only that, one who gets me. Nobody I mean, even responded. Long, Nobody even double blinked to that. I wasn't sure if I what, said it or thought it. Thank you, Coach. What demographic you're in? I love you. I there's, love you. There's, there's something for everybody here. And and look, Brandon, you're exactly right. It's it, it's about it's about consistency. And when I saw him, when I watched him coming out of, of college, that was a concern. It was consistency with with his throws because he often made wide receivers work. And it was consistency with his with his reads because he was late on some throws. And I didn't know how much that would progress. And I give Brian Dayball, the offensive coordinator, tremendous, yep. tremendous credit for his development. And Brian... Uh, develops quarterbacks holistically. He's got a great understanding of not just mm -hmm. the offense, but Brian worked on the defense for a long time as well. So he teaches quarterbacks the ins and outs of defense from a defensive perspective, which is different. And I think that really helps offensive players grow. And you look at his numbers, and, and we talked about completion percentage, but he's also doubled his touchdown percentage. He's cut his interception percentage mm -hmm. in half. He's improved his quarterback rating by 40 percent so all that being said it still comes back to brandon's point about consistency because nick Foles in his second year threw 27 touchdowns and two interceptions he had 119 quarterback rating he his his yards per completion were like 17 it was an unbelievable season but you didn't get that consistency so now we got to see whether or not this growth stays on the same trajectory and even if it doesn't can he stay at the level he's currently at and, and the, the point about the deep ball yesterday, Stefan Diggs just came out and said he thinks the deep ball wasn't very good in Buffalo. And that's something they need to work on. So as you become more successful mm. and as guys start pressuring for, for different types of throws, the question is, can you handle that pressure as well to make everybody happy while still being the guy that you were the previous season? Well, I don't want this to be lost. I don't think it's been mentioned yet. What Emmanuel Sanders said that he hasn't seen this within 12 years in the league, 
He's played with Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, <laughs> Drew Brees, Peyton Manning. Yeah, I mean, right. that is high <laughs> praise. And I'm look, I, I, his ceiling right. Super Bowl winning quarterback who's a Hall of Famer. I mean, that's what we're talking about. If Pat Mahomes wasn't in this league, who knows what we'd be saying about Josh Allen and his potential. And, Brandon, you're right. right. Obviously, they have to keep going through Kansas City, obviously Lamar Jackson. A lot of great teams out there in the AFC. But Mahomes and the Chiefs aren't going to win it every year. All right, they're not going to get there every year. So Buffalo can win some Super Bowls. I like the fact that the organization has been strong recently. They've been putting, you know, he's got a nice receiving core with Cole Beasley, and they added Sanders. Obviously, Stephon Diggs helped take him to another level, but I'm not going to give Diggs all the credit. The fact that Allen made such a jump last year, that speaks to his work ethic. That's I got to believe. For him to jump the way he did, he has to have a really good work ethic and be a listener and a learner. And that's where I think the talk Coachable. about his consistency comes in, right? That's the next step for him. But I think with his work ethic and all the talent he has, I think he can get there and be more consistent. Yeah, so right, the right. trajectory is what caught my eye, Brandon. So he went from 20 to 37 touchdowns. He went from 58% completion percentage to 69% completion percentage. So you see him getting up and expect him to be better. On the other hand, their season starts pretty rough. You go, you have Pittsburgh, Miami, right. and Washington. Pittsburgh, third best defense. Miami, if they figure out what's going on with Xavier Howard, but I expect Brian Flores to make that defense a little right. bit better. We know how good Washington's <coughs> defense is, second best. But to Chris's point, the Emmanuel Sanders thing, I think that we have to stop down and sort of give that a lot of credit. That just wasn't an offhanded comment. Right. I think what he is telling the no. world, the sports media, the other guys saying like, Yo, this dude is better than I thought. This dude is way better than I expected, and you should expect great things. Right. What was your take on specifically what Emmanuel Sanders said? Because it feels like he could be like, yeah, I'm happy to be here. But the fact that he went out of his ways to say, like, yeah, I hadn't seen a pass like that in 12 years, it was jaw-dropping, well, really made me think that Josh Allen's better than I thought. Yeah, well, first off, there's an excitement when you're the new guy in the building, especially at the wide receiver position. There's like this little pressure on the receiver and the quarterback, the offensive coordinator to kind of figure out uh, um, how to get you involved, right? Coach said this last year, and I've been riding with it ever since, and I love it. Chemistry and continuity is everything, right? So you're trying you, – sometimes you just get a little excited and you can, you know, you can say a little too much because the reality is, yes, he played with those quarterbacks, right? And, and you know, uh, Big Ben, Drew Brees, also uh, Peyton Manning. But when you look at it, what makes Big Ben great is not, is not him just standing in the pocket and throwing on time. It's him getting outside the pocket. Those off-schedule plays, you know, oh, I got to break off my route now. So it's not just a crisp post where you put your foot in the ground at seven, go to the near post and catch that right on the hash. That's not what you're going to get from Big Ben. You got an old Peyton Manning who could only throw it 40 yards. And you got an old Drew Brees who couldn't, who can't, who can only throw it, you know, 40, 50 yards consistently a couple times a game. So that's what he got. Like he is just rejuvenated with that. But here's what I would say also when it comes to Josh Allen like Josh Allen uh, and, and you got to highlight this when you because because Chris talked about you know work ethic and he talked about this jump and you talked about the jump but coach really hit it on the head and this is a guy I'm gonna I'm throw I'm gonna put coach on the spot here coach it was the one that kind of discovered Brian Dayball. Brian Dayball was my offensive coordinator with the Miami Dolphins. He's a young pup. I think it was his first gig at the OC job. And this dude was sensational, how he met everybody. You're talking about me in my prime when I was a hot-headed young pup out there and how he was able to coach me every single day and say, Brandon, no, this is how we're going to do things. Brandon, I hear you. Okay, Brandon, let me, what, what do you want? Give me 10 plays, Brandon. All right, you say you need the ball more? Draw up 10 plays. Have it to me before Tuesday, before noon, and I'm going to look at it. <laughs> and so he is a guy that knows how to coach people. He has that New England mentality where he can be hard, but at the same time he's relatable. And that's why you're seeing this kid jump the way he, he has is because of Brian Dayball, coach. Look, I, I love Brian Dayball, and, and he's I've been around some hard workers. He, he's right up there on top of the list, and he's one with Nick Saban. He's one with with Bill Belichick. And and even as a young guy, 
you go through that 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 phase where you're, you're trying to get into coaching and, and look we we try to to, to kill guys and, and test their metal in in that position and you couldn't stop you couldn't stop him and he's smart and he's he's relatable to the players and and he listens really well and tries to make sure that that everybody's incorporated and and on the throw and the, and the comment from Emmanuel Sanders I don't want to be Debbie Downer here but there's a lot of exciting things that happen in training camp without pads <laughs> right <laughs> right <laughs> coach let me put you on the spot oh. coach wah, coach wah. let me put you on the spot real quick yeah, okay. you're right. No, you're right. Real quick, coach. <laughs> Brian Dayball, they lucky to have him back as the OC. Brian Dayball, go get his head coaching job next year. Are you going to go there, accompany him, and be maybe his DC <laughs> OC? What's up? What you going to do? Ah. Huh? Brandon, here's, here's, here's what I've learned about, about dealing with, with questions like that about the future is you never talk about the future. You only focus on today, and I'm really excited <laughs> to be here. Oh, give me that New England <laughs> win. <laughs> oh, please. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.